All right, B-listers, you know the drill. This is your official spoiler alert for the episode. If you don't want any spoilers, stop the episode now. And if you don't care about spoilers, hold on to your seats because this episode starts now. Hi, Court. And hello, fellow B Critics. Welcome to another episode of the B Critics Podcast. This week's movie has some pretty serious twists and some very strange happenings. It'll have you saying, aha, but also, wait, what? <laughs> you just got to watch it for yourself <laughs> to understand. <laughs> but before we really get into it, let's tell the people where to find us. Right. So you can find the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at B Critics Podcast. Hit that subscribe button and follow our Instagram for all the best movie content. Yeah, hit subscribe. Okay, <laughs> I think it's time to get into the episode. Yes, our guest critic for this episode is Holly. Welcome back, Holly. Hello, hello, friends. Hi, Holly. Hi. <laughs> Holly is um, a return guest. She's actually our very first guest that we ever had on the podcast. So we recorded La La Land with Holly previously in our first season, and we are so, so excited to have her return today. I am very excited. I have some new thoughts, so ready to share. (laughs) Um, So we'll link Holly's La La Land episode in the show notes below. But Holly, do you want to introduce the movie that we're going to be talking about today? Yes. Today, we are going to be talking about the fabulous movie, A Simple Favor. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's actually not fabulous. It's frightening. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. It's a thriller, so. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So before we start really talking about it, I'll give like a quick description. So Stephanie Smothers is your typical suburban mom. She's overly nice, conservative, and seemingly the perfect parent in every way. Emily Nelson is the exact opposite. She's a beautiful corporate baddie with a high-profile job and less free time than a fridge. Stephanie and Emily somehow become friends, at which point Emily disappears. Stephanie takes to her mommy vlog for comfort and assistance in finding her bestie, which leads to the discovery of some very well-kept secrets. Who is Emily Nelson? Where has she gone? And how is Stephanie going to get her back? Yeah, this movie definitely generates a lot of questions while you're watching it. That's for sure. Mm-mm. I was very back and forth the whole time about what was <laughs> mm-hmm. happening, who mm-hmm. done it, the whole thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's lots of twists and turns. Yeah, everybody's suspicious for mm-hmm. different reasons. Yes. <laughs> so this movie, I'll give like the quick rundown. It's almost two hours long, hour 57 minutes. Um, It's a mystery thriller, and it's kind of a dark comedy, actually. It's, like, Mm -hmm. decently funny. Um, And it's rated R for a lot of things, language, drug use, violence, sexual content, graphic nudity. Yeah, that's definitely in there. Um, (laughs) And it came out in 2018. It's produced by Lionsgate and Fiegco, which I guess is because of this guy who's a director, Paul Feg. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) And I don't really know him super well, but he's known for like quite a few films. Um, So some Mm -hmm. comedy films starring Melissa McCarthy, including Bridesmaids, The Heat. Um, He also also did Bad Teacher, which is kind of different. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Have you seen that, Holly? A long time ago, but yeah. Seen yeah. <laughs> it's a little strange. This movie definitely has like the vibe of those movies, I think, mm-hmm. but it's just a bit darker, I guess. Yeah, a lot bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the screenplay is by Jessica Scharzer, uh, music Theodore Shapiro. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, but this movie has a 
pretty notable cast. And we're probably going to spend a lot of time throughout this talking about them. Um, but obsessed. mainly, <laughs> we've got Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively, who play mm-hmm. those two um, main characters, Stephanie and Emily, respectively. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think they were great picks <laughs> for this. I thought they were fabulous. Anna Kendrick, I have a love-hate relationship with. Like, I love every movie she's in, but she's, like, really annoying. So. Yeah. Like, yeah, I could I see that. It's like, a perfect character choice because, like. Yeah. Like, Stephanie's annoying. But, yes. like. <laughs> but, like, Anna Kendrick did great. But, like, you know, like, you're yeah. annoying. Blake Lively, <laughs> I love. In Another Life, I am Blake Lively. You are already Blake Lively. <sighs> <laughs> I love her so much. But, like, she did an awesome job. She was, like, oh, I loved her in Gossip Girl and then now this. Was I was about dramatic. to say this was very similar to Serena Vanderwood's in, but, like, grown up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know how y'all feel, but, like, I've been watching a few interviews of them about this movie, and I kind of feel like they are – in real life, like very similar to the characters that they portray in this. And I don't know if that's why like Blake Lively's character in Gossip Girl is that way. And like Anna Mm -hmm. Kendrick seems annoying because I thought she was annoying in her interviews too. So like I think they were chosen very well for these roles. Yeah, I will say too, I think Blake Lively is in the crew that does method acting, but she takes it like to a whole nother level. So, like, really? when this movie was coming out, like, when they announced the movie was coming out, she deleted her Instagram and, like, started a new Instagram and only followed people named Emily Nelson. <gasps> what? That's <Yes>. so weird. <laughs> that is so Super interesting. Odd. Because, you know, like, <laughs> like Blake Lively is, like, intertwined with all the Taylor Swift stuff and all the Easter yeah. eggs. So mm-hmm. that's quite interesting that she yeah. would do something like that. Okay, do you know, not? Know I don't know y'all? anything about the Taylor Swift Easter eggs and Blake Lively connection. You, no, wait. Absolutely nothing. Blake Lively, like her daughter, is like on one of Taylor Swift's songs. Yeah, like, like the gorgeous song songs. Is That's named, Blake Lively's yeah. daughter. Yeah, what? it's like, okay, so I'm not a big like Swift besties. Piece, so I don't know all the details. But yeah, she's very close with Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Mm-hmm. And like people have gone, like, seen it all on TikTok. People have gone crazy, like, <laughs> Blake Lively posted this on Instagram, which must mean that Taylor Swift is going to come out with, mm-hmm. you know, like they're linking the oh, two. And so she like gives she... Easter eggs to what's going to happen yeah, with Taylor she's Swift connected. releasing. Yeah, okay, hasn't okay. she helped like um, produce one of her music videos or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like close. Yeah. They're, yeah. So I think that's so <laughs> interesting that she would she, like thrives her on this Instagram and do her own little. Easter, egg. Easter eggy thing for yeah. her movie. Mm. I like it. That is interesting. I thought it was fun. I was like, damn, like you went that extra mile on this one. Mm-hmm. I would not delete my Instagram just because I was in a movie. No. Maybe that's why I felt like she seemed like her character though in interviews because she was even dressed like her. She mm-hmm. had like a like a really like high neck like button up thing with like ruffles in the front and like a vest yeah. over it and I was like that feels like something that Emily Nelson would have worn mm-hmm. yeah I think she okay. just like takes it an extra step but she probably also is very similar to this character like in real life so mm-hmm. so then we've also got Henry Golding um, who plays the man Sean no notable films really from him doesn't sound he like was, we like him very much. He was just like an actor. Like, yeah. He was he just was, an actor. He wasn't like <laughs> super special. I don't think he was supposed to be a standout role. Like, he's like yeah. the supporting role, but he was meh. Like, mm-hmm. I honestly like had to look up his name so I didn't forget it. My, my favorite side character was Linda Cardellini, who we've talked about her before. She is Chutney and Legally Blonde, and she also mm-hmm. played Velma in the Scooby Doo movie. So, I just love her. I saw her come on the screen and I was like, ooh, she's going to have a good character. She always Wait, who had did a good she character. play in this? The like art she, lady? Yeah, she's the artist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She looks a little bit like Elliot Page. So sometimes I'll see her and be like, oh, is that Elliot Page? But it's not. It's Linda Carter. I never would have made that connection. But I think, because I think um, Elliot Page looks very distinct, but oh. I totally 
could see how people would not think that. Um, and I like I, I see how was, they look similar. Mm-hmm. When she was like, "Now, like all I can paint is these knives," and I was like, <laughs> 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 "And um, Anna Kendrick's characters over there, are like, oh, they're very nice. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful knives, or whatever." She said. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, "If I was gonna paint you, I'd paint you like a saint or something." And then she's like, yeah, she's like "People are like saints when they die, when they're dead or something." And I was like, "Oh." I was like, Anna- I'm laughing, but I think this is supposed to be, like, serious. I don't know. Anna Kendrick does, like, uncomfy really well. Yeah. Like, yes. when people say something weird to her and she has to, like, react to it. Because I think she does that in the Twilight movies really well, too. Mm-hmm. When, like, Bella is, like, just being strange and she reacts to it with, like, okay. Like, I <laughs> yeah. think she kind of does that in this movie well, too. And it happens yes. throughout. Yeah. So this movie is known for being based on a book of the same name, um, A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell from 2017. And I think people who really like that book really like this movie. Haven't I've read never it, read it. So I don't know. No, I don't know. Nope. Couldn't say. <laughs> the movie was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's really like take some time to dig into the characters of the movie because we really have two – we talked about them, but really two big stars. Mm -hmm. And the first is Anna Kendrick who plays Stephanie Smothers. Um, Stephanie is a mother of Miles who's played by Joshua Satine. And we learn that her husband is potentially killed – by her half no other way around no, other way around. her half brother is it's like a murder killed <laughs> by her husband in a car crash because she had a relationship, relationship with her <laughs> her brother who is potentially the true father of her child and on the side she is just an innocent lady who runs a vlog for parents Mom. and does crafts and recipes she comes across as so like, hi friends, like I'm so sweet, I'm a country mom, um, but I'm gonna protect everyone. And then you find then. all these things, and then she does it again, like oh at God. her dad's funeral. That's when she hooks up with her brother, and then at Emily's funeral, she hooks up with her husband. I'm like, girl, didn't you learn the first time? No, no. it seems like she doesn't like have any morals like she's just like living light like <laughs> no. she seems like she's nice and stuff but then you're like mm-hmm. is she really or is she kind of cuckoo mm-hmm. and then there's like whenever uh they like whenever emily gets her drunk and um she said when she confesses all this stuff and she's like some people just hide it better i'm like yeah you're like the perfect person who hides it like really well that you're like mm-hmm. crazy and not a good person mm-hmm. even though you're like on on the mommy vlogs like she's like the person who's like in an mlm like yes on mary yeah. Kay. yep <laughs> so yeah. Like, like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah i was gonna say i don't think she hides it that well because i think she comes across as a little crazy like i think the people that are like involved in that stuff like you look at them and you're like wow like their life is just so different than yeah. the life that I would live. <laughs> Anyone that's uh, yeah. too sweet, you automatically are like, there's something. They're a little on There's something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then we have Blake Lively's character, Emily mm-hmm. Nelson. And yeah. she has a son who is in Stephanie's son's class. So her son is named Nikki. Um. And so Emily's thing is that she has this like really high profile job working in fashion, I guess. Um, And she is frustrated by her husband, Sean's lack of success in his own career as like a English professor. Mm -hmm. Um, And we learn a lot of like really crazy shit about Emily. Um, So one is that her real name is actually Hope. And she has an identical twin named Faith, who, when they were 16, set fire to their family house, killing their father. You forget that she's actually a triplet. Yeah. Oh, it consumes their third in the womb. (laughs) 
<laughs> what a strange <laughs> added <charity>. detail. <laughs> oh yeah, charity. <laughs> I was like, that has, that is for comedy. Like that is just to make us chuckle. There is no way. <laughs> Yeah, because you find that out when she's being like all like Miss Housewife, but like I murdered my sister. You know, at the end, she's like, "Actually, we're triplets." Mm -hmm. I knew, like, I caught on to the fact that she probably had a twin, and that's what was going on. But the whole triplet thing threw me off. I was like, "That was just just a little extra." Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I'm impressed that you caught on to that. I feel like this whole movie. I was just shook by everything that happened. I was like, oh, okay, she has a twin. I'm oh, like a little detective. Wow, she was, what? Yeah. We were here like, yeah, I, need to I don't know what's think. Going on. The first time I watched it, I don't think I knew. I thought the husband did it for a while. And then I figured out she did it. But then the whole, like, the twin thing, I was like, what? Like, yeah. that threw me off. Mm-hmm. She's just a psycho. Just yeah. crazy also i want to point out the first time we see her she's like stepping out of the car and she's got her red bottoms on and she you see the umbrella blow like across the screen and that's supposed to be like an homage to like a western when the gunslingers are coming out to like have their fight and it's like oh that's funny so it's supposed to show like symbolize that like like, a tumbleweed yeah, it's supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to be an umbrella. Weed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's to symbolize that, like, hmm, maybe this is not, like, the sweetest relationship. Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I also, okay, like, when she, like, gets out and she goes over and the kids are like, I want a play date. And she's like, no. I want a play date. <laughs> no. And then she's like, I don't think I'm going to win this one. Do you drink? I was like, so we're just giving in the kids that fast. I don't know. I was just like, <laughs> I was like. I don't know. I was like, if you say no, let that no get in the car, kid. I don't know. My mom literally would have been like, shut up. I don't yes. care what you want. Get in the car. We'll talk about this later. I know. I, for someone who's so like, I don't take, I don't listen to anybody. She gave in to her kid real fast. She just loves him. Yeah. I <laughs> love her son. I think he's cute. He's so cute. Like when they're in the car with Anna Kendrick and her son Mm -hmm. and they like slam on the brakes and he goes like, damn, are you trying to kill us? (laughs) Like he's like one liners were so cute because he's so small. I know. I think they're cute cute. from afar. I think if I had to deal with those kids, (laughs) I'd be annoyed. You're saying this as a preschool like a kindergarten teacher like i know that's why i'm like it's all cute from the screen (laughs) but if you have a kid tell you no i don't want to go on a play day and like you have to tell them three times "Mm, that's not funny that's not cute cute. (laughs) only cute on tv and it's if they're doing that in public just imagine what happens when you get home you know because parents are always nice i don't know yeah anyway those turn out to be a little bit of a mess my TED talk okay move on (laughs) so then we have Sean Townsend played by Henry Golding and somehow this movie ends up with like a love triangle deal which I I don't hate his character yeah that's how I feel like I didn't understand like what the deal was with him he was just there I don't know I I literally was like y'all are just bored like why are we hooking up with everybody Yes. Like, yeah. yeah, that's how I felt too. I like couldn't understand the motivations for Stephanie to like get with him. Like I just – other than she was like lonely maybe well, and she like saw their connection. The first time that we meet him, he like immediately has a connection with her because she's into mm-hmm. like novels and he's mm-hmm. a writer. And so she's they like read his only book. get each other. Yeah. I forgot so, about that. That probably did turn him on a lot. Yeah, and she's, like, sweet and does things for him, mm-hmm. whereas, like, Emily would never. He probably likes the contrast. You know, he has, like, Emily who will, like, punch him, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> Stephanie who will, like, bake him muffins. Has dinner ready exactly at the second yeah. he gets home. <laughs> like, yeah. mm-hmm. And she's, like, a little bit know. too there, like, too available, you know? Yeah, I think the she's just lonely. Is exciting, yeah. Well, like, let's talk about that a little bit, like the juxtaposition between Emily and Stephanie, because obviously that's like super important in this story, mm-hmm. in showing whether it's Sean's interest, but also like 
Emily kind of trying to help Stephanie like not be so stereotypical mom, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like stop apologizing. Yeah. That's a horrible like women's trait or whatever. When she tells I I agree with that actually. Yeah. I think Stephanie is the like quintessential stereotypical woman. Like stay at home mom kind of deal, even though she's a single mom. And just like does all the things that women are supposed to do. Whereas Emily is breaking all of the gender norms. She works a high profile job. She wears a pantsuit. She says whatever she wants to say. And she says what she means. She doesn't say it nicely. Like she just is everything that women aren't supposed to be. And it's, I don't know. I think I they think, are helping each other. I think, way. honestly, though, that they're both absolutely insane. And that's why <laughs> they are the way that they are. So I think that <laughs> Emily Like, at the is- end, whenever Stephanie's like, We're, are we really best friends? Like, are you just saying that? Because, like, eh. and she's like, no, you're really my best friend. Yeah. Like, you've known each other for three weeks. Like, that is all fake. Three weeks? So, I like, think I that think long. that, no. Like, I think it was like one week and a couple days. I literally days. think it was like they hung out like twice and then she was like, pick up my kid. And then five days later she was missing and then here we are. It's literally been like a week and a half. Yeah. 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 And I think like Emily like is the way she is. Like this – no, not Emily. Stephanie is the way she is. Like the stereotypical mom because I think she's trying to cover up for like her true crazy – Like, I think she's, like, overcompensating. Like, she's done this, like, wrong thing, which is, like, her son is really the son of her brother. And, like, she's just trying to be, like, so extremely stereotypical and normal to, like, hide that fact. And then Emily is so crazy and she's just, like, larger than life, like, every going against, like, every gendered norm, basically, like, the badass mom. Like... Like, the way that she speaks in front of her son. Like, that is just so, like, extra. Like, like no, the even... tearing the labia comment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never let me do anything fun. Well, you got to tear through my labia during birth. And I was like, dude, what? Yeah, I like, know. even, <laughs> like, moms... I just, like, don't feel like people say that kind of stuff. No! So I just think that they're just both, like, so insane. <laughs> yeah. I like, don't know we have that oopsie Stephanie jar and then that lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oopsie. Oopsie. I don't know that Stephanie's like overcompensating. I think she's just doing what she thinks she's supposed to. Like she's okay. acting the way she thinks she's supposed to act. Yeah. And I don't know. And I she, think she's I, just annoying. <laughs> she is annoying. <laughs> I think she's just like that with a little One of those people. Yeah. Moral of this episode is mm-hmm. that just Anna Kendrick does annoying crunchy. very well. <laughs> yes. I yes. love Anna Kendrick. I Listen, I love both of them. I think Blake Lively is like the best thing to ever grace this earth. But I think Anna Kendrick like stole the show 100% in this movie. Mm-hmm, I agree. Yeah. It's she almost like, like Anna Kendrick everything. was the main character and then Blake Lively was like, uh, a, like kind of like you said, larger than life, like shadow character. But like, mm-hmm. it's almost like she wasn't there, but she was. Well, yeah. she wasn't. Though. She left like very early on in the movie. Yeah, she but, but she was like still there. Her presence was there. Yes. Which mm-hmm. like, it's very yeah. an Emily thing that her like presence <laughs> would be so big that it would be there. Yeah, still there when she's not not yes. there. She was yes. there, but yes. um, another thing I wanted to say. So they do like all the flashbacks of um, like Faith and Hope when they're younger. Can you imagine being cast as like a young version of Blake Lively? Like, what a big compliment that would be. <laughs> I know. I thought that too. Just be like, I was like oh, how did they pick? I them? could never. <laughs> My hair is too yeah. brown. <laughs> Especially because Blake Lively is just, like, known as, like, one of the most beautiful people. And, like, the yeah. way that Ryan Reynolds, like, hypes her up on social media. Like, I think every girl, like, wants to be her. So you're totally right. That's a huge compliment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's take a step back and talk about a bit of, like, how the movie was made. So I want to start mm-hmm. by talking about um, the music throughout. So yeah. we have an original score by Theodore Shapiro. Mm-hmm. And – 
if it's definitely like very eerie um we've got like it's very synthy we have like i feel like there's like um xylophone notes that like make it kind of have this like i don't know like creepy. eerie creepy feel to it mm-hmm. um and it also made it feel like cohesive throughout the movie yeah i I'm not going to lie. I didn't love the music. I thought it didn't really match and Mm -hmm. it made everything feel very cheesy. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like the old, I liked it at the beginning, like in the opening credits. I thought that was super fun. And I was like, Ooh, like I know what this is going to do. And then they kept bringing back the French, like with the accordion and everything. And I was like, I don't know if this works for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that same way. I felt like, like, cheesy is a good way to put it. Like, that was kind of, like, what brought, like, the comedy thing to my mind, you know? Like, mm-hmm. okay, this isn't, like, serious. Like, this is – we're supposed to be silly a little bit. Like, yeah, it was – the music helped aid in that part of it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think that – I mean, just to talk about it, like, that's probably my biggest qualm with this movie. And I think the music, like you said, Liz, like, not – fitting the story kind of Mm -hmm. exemplifies that because I think that it was so unbelievable like what was happening like why people had these motivations to like do all these crazy things and like I think the music was like almost too much compared to like the story that was happening so it did almost make it comical in a Mm -hmm. way yeah yeah well at the end maybe it was supposed to I'm not I'm not entirely certain I feel like it was because at the end, like in the, you know, the ending like credits where they like have the words come up on the screen that tell you like where everyone is now. Mm-hmm. It talks about how um, Sean wrote a um, a book called Oopsie Jar and people like critics thought it was like not believable. Mm-hmm. You know, like they thought it was the story was like too far fetched and not believable. So then it takes me back to like the music being like, the story is like, the story is not believable. Like it's very far fetched. Like mm-hmm. there's no way this happened. Like you had all this happen on your mommy vlog. Like you went live <laughs> with nanny cam on your mommy mommy blog, and <laughs> that's how we caught the killer. And then she gets hit Mean Girl style. Like by you know how Regina George gets hit by the yes, bus. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was like Mean Girl, Blake yes. Lively, Regina George, like. Hit by, and what was it? America's Hybrid, like silent but deadly. Like one of these. And it was the mommy blogger, like the guy from the class, yes. the room parents, who was watching and making fun of her. <laughs> watching the vlog that he makes fun of, pulls in and yeah. saves her. Wild. I wonder. I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, Me too. That's why I was like, hysterical. this is a comedy. This is a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, like, because this movie is so like larger than life like murder mystery style like it feels so Mm -hmm. unreal i wonder if that's like how the book is you know Mm. like i wonder if that's how it's written and so if if it is an accurate portrayal of the book or if the book like felt more realistic in a way or what um you probably should have read it or at least read like critic reviews of the book (laughs) i don't know i I just had no (laughs) Interest Oopsie. in reading yeah, it. Uh oh. <laughs> RB. <laughs> that was like the perfect um, Mean Girls is exactly the, like what I was looking for. I was like, this reminds me of something, but what is it? It was mean literally girls. Mean Girls. And it's yes. like the perfect time because, you know, like Regina George is standing there and she's like, and you, whatever she says, I don't know what she says. Yeah. And, and then, and like, yeah. like, Levy is standing there like, I'm going to shoot you like you if, if I can't have my husband neither can you and then <laughs> it was so funny. which is just it's so weird because it's like a murder mystery movie mm-hmm. the like score and the music is so like serious and eerie and then it's like I I don't know I just like couldn't connect it in my head like <laughs> is it a comedy is it a is it a thriller? Like, what is this movie? Like, but I guess talk about the cinematography because I have some notes about that. Okay. So I had a very hard time finding information about this movie and how it was made and like behind the scenes information. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I watched like a ton of interviews and I think they maybe did that on purpose. Like they wanted it to stay mysterious. I'm, I'm not sure. They went like, a little bit too far, but um, the director specifically said that he wanted to shoot it in that like bright light comedy style because and this is like a direct quote he says in the suburbs there's not a lot of hiding among the white walls and bright windows so it's supposed to be like in plain sight instead of it being like kind of hidden and you have to figure it out it's like let's just put it all out there and like let the audience like find out along with everyone else Yeah, I definitely felt that way. It felt like wide in the open, like the craziest thing, like that Stephanie just like literally like the day after Emily died, like moves in with (laughs) Sean and there's like a moving truck at her house and like so out in the open. They're like so out in the open. Their house literally has like huge windows that you can see straight through. Yes. Yeah. Also, let's talk about the fact that she literally has been talking about on her mommy vlog how her friend has gone missing and like anyone that can help. And then all of a sudden she's vlogging from her friend's house living with her friend's husband. Yes. Yes. Like, and nobody thought that was weird. I would have if her, if this was real life, like the commenters, people would have gone crazy. The internet would have attacked her. Yeah, that, that was, not was okay. actually the only like believable part, though, is that her following grew because she was doing all this crazy stuff. I was thinking, yeah. I was like, I would watch That's this. True. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. a train wreck. You don't want to look away. Like, I, mm-hmm. I need to know. <laughs> yes, and she gets even more unhinged. Like, when she finds out, and she like gets on there, and she's like, Emily. If you're out there somewhere, like I hope you have, I have hope, and then Ugh. gotta have faith, and and then Emily's yeah. like, Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Wait, okay, about moving into her house. This part, I okay, I've watched this movie like several times. I didn't catch mm-hmm. this. I guess maybe I just looked away. I didn't catch this until like my second time watching it, when she like she's in the closet and she's like moving everything out of the closet. Mm-hmm. And then she, like, goes and gets her stuff. And, like, she's walking back up to the closet. And she's, like, do, 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 dancing. Right? And then she gets in and everything's put back. Mm-hmm. That was creepy. I still don't know. Like, so did Emily show up and put it back? Like, what do we – I think that's what you're I supposed to assume. I think so. She did it so fast. Like, she put all I think so fast. there were a lot of, like, <laughs> moments like that in this movie that were never – Explained. Truly explained. So like yeah. that, and then her son, Emily's son, like seeing her all the time. Like, yeah. I think she that, was visiting was, her son. Yeah, yeah. And she was like staying close enough to know exactly what was going on, like exactly what was going on. And she was like nice blouse, you know, like she was watching. Yeah. And like giving her son like notes to pass to Stephanie, like that's fucked up. That is weird. Like, I mean, lady, I, if you're trying to get this insurance money, like, move on. Like, go away. At yeah. least for, like, a month. Don't just, like, show back up. <laughs> like, what did you think was going to happen? the whole insurance money thing threw me off. Because, mm-hmm. like, the whole per- thing was, like, they, like, whatever. She's mad about her husband, like, not having, like, not writing another book and not being successful. But, like, that didn't really inspire her. And then... Her, like, sister comes out of the woodworks and wants money, and so she kills the sister. I don't know. I just felt like it – I don't know. I just It connected, but I, there was still something, like, off about it, you know? Like, yeah. you didn't kill your sister for the insurance money. You killed your sister because she – Because you wanted to. Was going to go to the police. Well, no, because she yeah. was going to go let the – like, you know, let She's the cat off tattle. the bag. Yeah. Yeah. But – and I, I guess maybe if you kill her, like, you're going to – she's going to get found out, so might as well get the money out of it. I guess that was the thinking, but I just felt like there was a lot going on. I agree, yeah. though, and I think that is why it was kind of effective that it was shot the way it was, like light and bright <clears throat> and like almost in a comedy style because imagine if this movie was shot like how like Gone Girl was shot, like really serious. Mm-hmm. Like I just don't think it would have made sense because I think it would have been so like unbelievable. Like, it's I too feel over like, the top. Yeah, way too over the top. Like the motivations are so loose. Mm-hmm. And I think if you don't like introduce that 
comedy aspect to it, then it almost is like, why the heck is this happening? Yeah. Which I already felt yeah. like that. So, and, and then Anna Kendrick couldn't be in that movie if it was dark. No, no, <laughs> I don't think Blake she Lively could. Yeah, they Blake could. Lively's they were fantastic. Have... Yeah, I think Blake Lively could have done it, but that's just <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> so speaking of Emily's like closet and that whole scene where she like uh-huh. snaps it back together. How do we feel about Emily's wardrobe throughout the movie? Obsessed. Yeah, she was just so sophisticated, high fashion. Like, it made me laugh when Anna Kendrick, when Stephanie would dress like Emily. Because it yes. was like, like when and she like, wore that thing with like on? the flower on her neck. Yes. Yeah. No, well, it wasn't even like when she would wear Emily's clothes. It was like when she'd wear clothes like like, like she her. thought that Emily like would the wear. necktie. Yeah, and like okay. would specifically pick out the clothing that like looked similar. Yeah, and it was like like yeah, that's similar, but like it was so weird and obnoxious and like not right, mm-hmm. not right. She was like trying to be her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then she actually like. like sophisticated yeah. and like- she goes to her job dressed like that and <laughs> and the guy's like first of all <laughs> get rid of the neck scarf the last yes. season of Hermes neck okay. scarf <laughs> wait I laughed like- and he was like it, she was like it's my grandma's and he was like did she want you to hang yourself with it <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that guy <laughs> oh, okay <no. laughs> I loved Dylan Nylon's character that her or Emily's the boss, boss. Yes, mm-hmm. loved him, thought he was so funny. And if you didn't catch it, he is played by the same guy who plays um, Mr. Wickham in Pride and Prejudice. Holly, have you ever seen, seen that, that movie? movie? I haven't seen it, no. Oh, y'all should watch it. <laughs> I so think we're good. in a minority. <laughs> but I was like watching it and I was like, that guy looks so familiar and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because I knew like a 20 year younger version of him mm-hmm. like in a different movie. But, I liked it um, when she was like, because, you know, Emily told her, you have to stand up for yourself. Like, you can't, like, let these bosses. Mm-hmm. And she was like, get this Ken doll away from me. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he was, like, trying to, like, attack her. And she just, like, that's wonderful. And then walks off. Yeah. <laughs> he leaves. I was like, yeah. Because yeah, Stephanie. With her in the <laughs> workplace was so weird. I loved every second of that scene. <laughs> I loved the whole thing. I know she's it like was definitely interesting. Through an office she's with like all clear glass windows, like yes. in this dark office, like people can see you. Everything's clear. Yeah. Like, and then when one she like door in the whole yeah. office <laughs> underneath the desk, and that's when she sees the picture of Emily, like Gotta from underneath. Faith. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, Faith. What a weird, weird. That was a weird picture. I didn't understand. And then that. she used that picture to be like, "Have you seen my friend?" Yeah, and like posted them around town. I was like, "Not even her." Is wild, absolutely Not wild. Ugh. Wait, can we talk about when she goes to the parents' house or and the Bible camp? I had gosh, those were great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's so let's talk about when she goes to like. Let's talk about like her whole like journey the childhood thing like (laughs) i don't i didn't understand like okay there's so much to unpack here we have i guess when stephanie goes to her parents house and i read that they killed when they did the fire that like that um burned down the wing of that house that it killed Mm -hmm. the dad yeah so i guess like who was that guy like her husband's like or her mom's like new husband i was thinking it was like the groundskeeper yeah well at first for like the first two times i watched it i thought he was the husband and the third time i watched it i was like wait because in the end it says like she went to jail for the murder of her husband or her father and sister and i was like father like he was alive but no Mm -hmm. they burnt him down and so then i'm like (laughs) who's the guy with the gun like And I guess just wanted like, to order from her. Yeah. I know the suit. Okay. That was so just like that whole scene was like so funny, but so like creepy and like mm-hmm. murdery. But like 
I felt like that was something that would happen to you, Holly, like in real life. (laughs) Yeah. And then you'd like send me a Snapchat and be like, you'll never guess what just happened. (laughs) Yes. That is something I would do. And he like knocks on the window with his gun. I just want to order the suit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, man. And I like when the mom's like, who are you with? What are you here for? Like, da, 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 are you with the police? Like, I was estranged from my husband at the time. And you're like, what is happening? Like, we didn't know any of this information. Yeah, she's just like will- willfully giving it up. Yes. And then you're like more like confused. Concerned. So do you think that Emily could have gotten away with it if she had just like not – made Stephanie so aware of her presence like because I feel like Stephanie was so like needed to figure out what was going on and was like you know going and finding out about her past and her family and like at the same time though she was looking for her like she was worried about her like she's putting up posters and stuff but I don't know Mm -hmm. if that was just because like Emily was haunting her like I almost feel like Emily could have gotten away with it yeah Mm -hmm. I think that Emily wanted her son back and then uh, I think okay. she got jealous about her being with her husband. And I think that she kind of let that Rightfully take over. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Emily – well, I don't think Emily planned all this. I think that her sister showed up and she was like, ah, crap. And, like, mm. it was, like, spur of the moment. So then she was like, okay, wait, we'll do the life insurance policy. And then, okay, well, like, me and Nikki and Sean or whatever, we'll, we'll go away. But then Stephanie, like, swooped in. And you know, goody two shoes did her thing again and slept with somebody at a funeral, which is not the vibe, people. Let's not, not do the that. vibe. We do not. Yeah, sleep all of with you out there, funerals. We don't sleep with our presumably dead best friend's husbands. Number one, not the move. Number two, funeral, not the place to pick somebody up. It's not. We've all don't seen wedding crashers. Way better to do it at a wedding, not with the groom, with someone else, not at a funeral. Just. It's not cute. <laughs> Funerals are not sexy. <laughs> no. Just in no. poor taste. Anyway, so <laughs> I think that she got jealous. And, like, they're both unhinged. We've discussed this. And so then she started acting unhinged. But she didn't realize maybe that Stephanie would be maybe even more unhinged. I don't know. They're, like, they're both unhinged. I think she was well aware of the psycho that is Stephanie after she heard about the brother thing. I think she was well aware. Yes. Um, I also think that she thought that she could use that as like blackmail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it just like didn't work that way. No. Yeah. She definitely tried. So, okay. So I want to talk about three like notable scenes in the movie. We can talk about more, uh, but I have three. Mm-hmm. So, The first is the kiss between Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively, which was kind of random. I know. Uh, Go ahead, Holly. Well, I was just saying, like, why? Like, it felt unnecessary. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe just adding to the comment. I think it was supposed to show that Anna Kendrick is, like, so lonely and she's looking for, like, connection in any way she can get it. Kind of yes. that's a good way to read it yeah. but didn't blake lively's character <clears throat> initiate the kiss i so i have no idea i must have looked away for like a split second i looked back and they were like smooching and i was like whoa wait a second i don't know it happened so fast <laughs> yeah i assumed anna kendrick's character initiated and that's why she was like apologizing and blake lively was like oh like it's fine oh and, you know, maybe I think- I, I think know. it was Blake Lively's character, and I feel like she was almost trying to get her to, like, loosen up. She was yeah. like, you're so, like, like tense. I don't know, like, stuck up and tense because you're <laughs> just, like, lonely and was trying to show her, like, you don't need, like, I, I don't know. I don't I really, I really don't know what the point of that was, to be honest. I if liked anything, it. I thought it was great. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I made me think of like later whenever or I don't know when when she's like um Sean's like I love you and she's like I don't do threesomes Threesomes. because like (laughs) he knew that like Blake obviously well and I also whenever he's like that's not what happened and made me think that like Emily did that to like make her think like oh yeah like we do this stuff all the time like 
it's cool here. And then later when Sean's like, that's not what really happened. But then later you see him with his like assistant. I don't know. It was like all confusing. Can know. we like take a second and talk about the whole deal with the student TA thing? Mm-hmm. Like what was that? Why was Stephanie not concerned? Like what? I I don't Well, there was that, that one time at dinner. They were at dinner after she saw them. Do you yeah. remember like she saw the TA and then she was like, how was work today? And she was like, you could tell she was like irritated. But then yeah. we kind of like, I feel like we like let that go later. Yeah. We just like moved on from it and acted like yeah. it didn't happen. <laughs> I I didn't understand that (laughs) at all, to be honest. I kind of just remember watching that and being like, okay. It kind of felt like it was meant to throw you off a little bit or something. I don't know. It was giving me Gone Girl vibes. It might have been like something because at the time, I think I still believed that the husband did it. And so maybe it's supposed to like help you like feed into that idea like the husband might have done it maybe mm, yeah because you're yeah. like oh he's having an affair like he must have done it and then later that like comes up i think whenever it's like you know when they like black or put him on the news and they're like abusive <laughs> cheating husband <laughs> kills wife twin and tries to frame wife for you know whatever i'm like man they threw him <laughs> under the bus real quick like okay yeah. no hesitation there were so many little nuggets like that that just confused me like little yeah. things that would happen and then they would cause something like that like a big news thing and then they would just get like brushed over like the next thing yep. would happen and i yeah. was just on like to the next one oh. that's why okay that just happened I, like this movie i had to watch like three times and i still don't know everything it's like, <laughs> like a wild ride like this so like every time i've watched it i'm like oh i i didn't get that last time i'm like oh that's interesting <laughs> I need yeah, to watch this every again time. 100%. <laughs> so the next scene I want to talk about is when Emily drowns her twin sister Faith. That like broke my heart. Mm-hmm. I hated that. Yeah, honestly kind of intense. Like a pretty dark moment for this movie. That yeah. another one that they just like brushed over. It's like yeah. oh well. Oh, she just I felt her. like like yeah. the way they showed it was very similar to the way that they showed uh, Stephanie's character sleeping with her half brother, where like yes. she's telling like what she wants to tell, but then you're watching what actually happened. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, Ooh, the parallels. I thought that was they actually pretty nonchalant <laughs> in both <laughs> scenarios because it made you really yeah. interested in what was happening because you were like, oh mm-hmm. shit. Like, that's and then both going characters, <laughs> like Emily, whenever Stephanie's telling stories, like bullshit, like you slept with him. Like, yeah. and then, and then, uh, seventies characters, like BS, you killed her. Like, you not killed even her. That. And so they both <laughs> call each other out. Cause they know, like you're lying. Yeah. They both knew. They knew. They know each other and- so well for not knowing each other that long. Yes. Yes. Maybe they really were best friends after a week. Maybe the they were secret lovers. Maybe. They did kiss. They're soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was a lie. It's just a ruse to cover up their lesbian yeah. romance. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's why Sean is so like non important. He's like, I don't understand. He's the cover up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except for when I hate these kind of scenes when like the first time you meet Sean and the first time like they're at their house and he comes in and they like start making out right in front of her. And they're like, oh, all over each other. I hate when movies do that. It makes me gross as the out. So yes, I agree. It was very uncomfy. And she's just sitting there like, like Anna Kendrick's like, okay, cool. Okay. Could you There's imagine that like happening in real life? Like, um, no. Yes, I, I can. I, that has happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, just like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, it was Holly, everyone. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was not, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> so let's talk about the final sequence of events. And I have the whole sequence like written down because it's mm-hmm. confusing. So I'm gonna I, go before you go through them. I want I just want to say that the final sequence of events was very murder mystery. Like yes, all of the movies that we've watched so far and talked about. Like, they all have that, like, final sequence that's, like, 
your twist like, after moving twist after twist 50 million ways and you're like oh what like uh yes. and, and then all of a sudden there's like this is what happened and you're like oh okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like, this is no exception one. <laughs> yeah. this one is absolutely wild like <laughs> couldn't follow it <laughs> while i was watching it i mean i kind of could i was just like wow wow like it would change so rapidly mm-hmm. so yeah okay so it starts with Emily and Stephanie both frame Sean. Mm-hmm. And so then he goes to jail and then he's released on bail. So he's at home. Mm-hmm. So then Stephanie, I guess, has like a change of heart. And so she stages an argument with Sean. She and front- Sean are in cahoots about it. Yeah. In front of Emily. And she Mm -hmm. fake shoots him and then like gets Emily to confess her crimes in like her like moment of emotion, but Mm -hmm. then discovers that Emily had cut the microphones. So it doesn't matter that she confessed her crimes. They had like planted bugs and, but Emily like suspected them. Yeah. And like, I didn't notice Holly. I don't know if on, to one of your two rewatches if you like noticed her cutting their microphones or something but I definitely didn't notice that they didn't show that no I think she did it before okay Mm -hmm. I think she knew the whole time that they were going to do this like from the moment they walked through the door I think she knew Mm -hmm. so she was playing it up yeah then Emily actually shoots Sean so now Sean is shot in the shoulder and then Stephanie reveals that she was vlogging the whole thing on like a button on her shirt, like a little mm-hmm. camera. And then Emily freaks out. Instead of shooting her, she runs away and she gets hit by a car driven by the friend Darren. Yeah. So wild. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the vlog was going to come in somewhere at the end. I there was no way that they played the vlog up so much and they weren't going to use it. Um, and also, Stephanie's character was way too calm. Way too calm. Yeah. And, like, I just knew. I didn't, like, I could never have called that it was going to be, like, a button nanny cam. That mm-hmm. was not something that I considered. Um, but I knew I knew the blog was going to be. I was like, there's something. They're going to use the blog. The vlog. And, like, some way the vlog's going to catch it. But I just didn't know how. And Something- like, so w- whenever she was like, um, every time she vlogged, you know, she'd be like standing up in front of the camera and be like, hey, moms, like, happy <laughs> Tuesday kind of thing. And then right before she like goes over, she's like leaned forward. She's like pressed into the camera. Or her body's kind of sideways. And she's very like unhinged. And she's like, well, moms, like sometimes. You just got to take things, you know, she's like very like different demeanor. So, you know, Mm -hmm. and then she like snaps off the camera and you're like, oh, I like didn't even think like I did not even. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I definitely didn't connect that. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Because she was like (laughs) very like upright the whole time with like she had a ring light. It was bright. And then all of a sudden she's Mm -hmm. like dark and she's like leaning in and she's twisted like her body's physically twisted. So you're like, ooh, it's coming. It's coming. And it something's it about is. to happen. <laughs> and so I guess that Emily goes to jail. Is that how it ends? Yeah. They arrest yes. her. Yeah. So and okay, have y'all seen <clears throat> Oh, go ahead. Well, I think that they're starting to shoot a second a sequel this in yes, the fall. Yes, that's what I was going to say, okay. is have yeah. you seen that they're going to shoot, there? there's another movie coming, which I don't really understand, like, is she going to escape from jail? Is it going to be, like, 20 years in the future? Like, what's going on here? I bet is they're going to start with like, her getting out of jail. Yeah. And then like she's going to have a favor. Time. Out of jail. I don't even know. She's going to need another one. I'm very intrigued. Or maybe... <laughs> Stephanie is the one who does something. Uh, they, Stephanie she did, is equally as crazy, in my personal opinion. So they did leave the blog with her kind of saying that she has become like the go-to person to like solve crime. So maybe it's going to be mm. a different one. And so yeah, have I think, anything oh. to do with Emily. 
But Blake Lively's definitely returning for it. So I think she's going to be in it. I think Blake Lively is part of the production team as well. But mm, she probably, cool. I mean, they can't not have her in it. They got to like wrap up her story some way. Yeah. She's in jail. That's wrapped up in my opinion. She's got to get out at some point. I liked when it was like, she is adjusting to prison life really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. As well as she can, I guess. I was like, of course she is. <laughs> it was giving – did you guys ever watch Orange is the New Black? Yeah. It was like Vaguely, giving yeah. those vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like she was like good at doesn't prison. Belong. It scared me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Surprisingly good at it. Not surprisingly. Yeah. Like she should be good at prison, but she okay. should stay there. Is there That's anything for her? Yeah. Agreed. Live out your life there. <laughs> Stephanie should be joining her, TBH. Um <laughs> is there anything that we didn't touch on that y'all wanted to talk about before we wrap up and talk ratings? I don't have anything. Um, that picture of Blake Lively. Oh shit! We did not talk about the, in the picture. Nude. The vagina painting. Yes. Oh my god! Yes, yes. Hanging Behind in her living and there's, room. There's the shot. We didn't talk about this, but the shot the where vagina. like Anna Kendrick is talking for like a long time, and that <laughs> painting just is just like behind her head the whole time, and it keeps coming back like all throughout the movie. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Super it was, weird. Th- it mm. looks like a like I was at first I was like is that a skyscraper and then I was like oh no she's nude. <laughs> That's not a building. <laughs> <laughs> the angle was not the most flattering angle. I'm just going to put that out there. Um mm, I don't know. <laughs> no. Ugh. I mean she no. And then okay wait, I thought of like three other things. Um when okay. like, or when <laughs> When Stephanie takes her picture and she's like, did you just take a picture of me? I just thought that was a fun scene. And she's like, yeah, I'm your and book, I mom. An interview. Yeah. <laughs> I saw an interview, too, of them talking about that. And she was, like, actually taking pictures of her, too. And I thought that was interesting because you never really – like, those are the details that you don't really think about is, like, when they're filming that. Are they, like, shooting a blank? Are they actually taking a picture? Like, what is going on there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a fun and scene. Then- I thought it was – alarming (laughs) another fun Mm -hmm. scene i liked was um the first time anna uh, emily and stephanie go to like their house and uh stephanie like the music's playing and she's like dancing and she's like vibing in her own way and then uh emily comes back in and she's like oh sorry i got caught up in the ambiance and she's like no no keep going baby Uh oh also i don't know about y'all i hate the word baby. baby the whole time yeah. And that irritated me. I hate it. Oh, I don't like the word baby. She kept being like, <laughs> all right, baby. Like, no, 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 no. I don't like that. I think that, that was like part me. of the masculine shtick. Like, this is what yeah. guys do. So I'm Because Blake Lively too. was yeah. Yeah, very true. like, she was like boss woman, but like masculine in her feminine, you know? Mm-hmm. Very Something masculine, I think. Very masculine. Like, very like Taylor Swift, like, I'm the man kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we we're taking it full circle. With the I love Taylor yeah. Swift. <laughs> All the tea swizzle stuff. <laughs> okay. Holly, are you ready to rate the movie? I think so. As a reminder, <laughs> we rate all of our movies through Letterboxd. So zero to five stars with half star increments. Okay. So I rated this movie a three out of five. Um, nice. Like I said, that was pretty solid. It was a good movie. I did have to watch it multiple times. Um, but each time I watch it, I get something new out of it. So it's fun. I'm excited for a sequel, which means that I obviously liked it. Had a good cast. Mm-hmm. It kept me engaged. Um, it was funny, but dark. And yeah, I think mm-hmm. it was good. Three out of five. That's me. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I also gave it three out of five stars. And okay. I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid movie. Um, definitely planning on watching it again. So, yeah. 
Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively like are just it for me. I love them. <laughs> I gave this movie two out of five stars. Um, I thought Ooh. it was. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was <laughs> very interesting, but I was like kind of confused throughout, and like I don't think I got like the comedy super well. Like I think mm-hmm. I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah, um, <laughs> and I probably I probably wouldn't watch it again anytime soon. But if it wasn't I like lively and appreciate it, it probably it wouldn't work. Like I no, would have. I think like if it one, hadn't one or two. Agreed. Agreed. Mm-hmm. I think if they hadn't been in it, it would have had like 0.5 stars from me. Yeah, it would have zero so. shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about like what everyone else is thinking. So the letterboxed average is a 3.2 out of five. Okay. Um, so we're kind of on the tomato money meter. There. Yeah. The tomato meter is an 84%, and the I audience score that. was a 73. So people who are rating this on Rotten Tomatoes, I guess, really enjoyed this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, IMDb mm. is a 6.8, which is more in line with how we're feeling. And only 56% of Google users liked the movie. So something's not lining up. I'm <laughs> People are like all over the board on this one. <laughs> the tomato meter honestly really confuses me on this movie. But <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to question it. Yeah. The critics loved it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree. <laughs> I think the critics, like the critics, like the real critics, like get it wrong a lot. Like they like movies yeah. that nobody likes and they dislike movies that everybody likes. Like mm-hmm. I think they can't really be trusted. They have opinions just like all of us. So yeah, I agree. Well, they also, I don't know. I just think of like, like the beat critic community is like average normal people, you know? Yeah. And then like the mm-hmm. real critics are like, it's their job. And like sometimes it's just different. <laughs> They're not taking into like I still realize know in this movie an 84%. Like it was entertaining. Like I can understand how y'all would be like, oh my gosh, it was so cute. Like I'd watch it again. Yeah. I don't think it's like that great of a movie. I think it's a solid yeah. 50 to 65% movie yeah well i mean i clearly don't think that but i mean I, i'm close 40 yeah. percent. close okay. enough close enough <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i think that wraps up our discussion holly thank you so much for joining thank you so much for watching <laughs> this movie three times and you coming so prepared with all the details <laughs> we love having you on the pod yes thank you i love being here I love to share. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun having you here. This was fun. Okay. I agree. Bye, Holly. Bye, Holly. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Be Critics. <laughs> All right. Yes, and bye, Be Critics. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to leave us a review, a rating. Um, be sure to follow us on all the things. Yeah. Yeah. You can find more information on our website, becritics.com, or you can find links to all the things, our socials, um, everything on our link tree in the episode show notes. Yes. And our next episode, we're going to be discussing Little Women to kick off our fourth season, which is going to be an actress spotlight of Florence Pugh. That's right. We're going to be talking about some of Florence Pugh's movies, which I hear some of you are very excited about. I'm very excited, like super (laughs) excited. Love Florence Pugh. So be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss it. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. All right. I think that's all we have. So we'll see you all next time. Bye, guys. Bye.